Hello guys, Free here. Welcome to the lecture today. In today's session, we're going to be talking about a fascinating topic that could be confusing, especially for folks just getting their feet wet within the Python ecosystem. You're going to come across Anaconda and you're going to come across pip install. What are they? What are the differences and when should you use what? We're going to unpack a lot of that today and hopefully you're going to leave with the lecture understanding when to use which of these and why they are both useful in my opinion. Now, the world of Python can get a little bit messy, but we're going to break this all down and really see how this all comes into play. So let's start with you having your machine. Let's say you have your laptop here. And this your laptop has an OS, an operating system. You could be working on Windows or you could be working on Mac. So now you've decided, all right, I need to start doing some Python work. I need to start developing something on Python. There are a couple of things that you can do. You can go out to the python.org website and you can download Python and install. As a matter of fact, that's what a majority of people are going to do. They're going to go out of Python and download Python and they're going to install it. Now, once you install Python that way, here somewhere on your machine, you're going to have Python installed. Like any other program that you install is going to show up on your machine. So let's say here you install Python 3.8. Now your machine has Python 3.8 and you can go ahead and you can develop. You can be writing your code and if you run your code, the version of Python you have is Python 3.8. Now Python 3.9, Python 3.10, 11, 12 could all come out, but you don't have that version of, Python, of, of, those, of those Pythons. You have 3.8 on your machine. Now there might be situation and it happens a lot where just working with one single version of Python might not be relevant. Let's say one application requires Python 3.8, another application requires 3.9, and you have to have these different versions of Pythons all running on your machine or different environments for different reasons. You might be a contractor and one of your clients wants you to build a website with 3.8, another project comes up for, for machine learning, you need 3.10 for that. And this could get really messy really quick. To paint the picture of it, let's use a white color here and just scroll down to say we still have our operating system which is OS now within the OS we're gonna make it a little bit bigger we're gonna make this operating system a little bit bigger to really capture what we need so the very first thing that we saw above is we can have Python 3.8 installed now what if we want to use, say, Python 3.9. Python 3.9, for whatever reason. Can you have two instances of Python installed on your machine at the same time? It becomes a challenge. Because if you if you have 3.8 and you want to install 3.9, you might be thinking about uninstalling 3.8 so that you can have the space to install 3.9. Now, there are workarounds around this, but to be honest, it's not very pretty. Okay, and we're going to go a little bit deeper into this. Then just within the context of Python 3.8, it still gets even more complex. So let's take, let's go in and just zero in on you working with Python 3.8. And we understand that Python is very beautiful because of all the packages out there that makes Python such an amazing uh, language because you can use what other people have built. So out here in the wild west, in the world, are these packages that people have built. And we talked about this in one of our previous videos. And these packages, you could be getting them from, uh, say, Anaconda Package Manager or Package uh, Index, or you can be getting them from PyPy.org uh, Package Index. Go to PyPy, you can see thousands and thousands of packages, NumPy, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, all of those are packages that you can need for your data science work. Now, if working with, and we're going to change our pen here one more time, we're going to keep changing it back and forth. So if working with Python 3.8, you might have a situation where you want specific versions of packages for your 3.8 work. So maybe you need version A1 of a particular package 
B1 of a particular package, C1 of a particular package, and D1 of that particular package to be available within Python 3.8 so you can work. So now we're not just talking about managing your Python environment, we're talking about managing the packages that are even inside of your, your, your Python environment. Okay, now the next person that is, or the next scenario that we have here, and we're gonna go this to green, is you have another Python environment sitting on your machine and you want similar kind of situations, right? So in this case, you want two Python to be on your machine at the same time, and then within the, the two Python, you want, for the second one, you want package A1, so version one of package A, you want version two of package B. So even though package B exists, there are different versions of package B. You want the second version of it. And within uh, C, maybe you want C1, and then D, you might want D3, all right? So how do you manage all of this? You can start seeing how the permutation here just is gonna explode very quickly in terms of knowing what what python and what python version you're working with and what packages you need within that to be honest this is not something that you're going to keep track of it by yourself or by just going in and looking at it and this is where environment managers and and, and package managers come into play and why we need them so going back to our topic today of anaconda versus pip it's really for those two things now, what is PIP going to help you with? PIP is going to help you in this case. So let's just zero in on, on this on this one here. PIP is, a, I think the short form or the long form for it is Python install package. At least that's what I've always just called it. It might mean something. Correct me in the, in the description below. But just, just think about PIP as if you have Python installed, whatever version of Python you have installed on your machine, Again, it means that you have one version of Python because you can only install one. PIP is not going to help you if you need three versions of Python. If you have one version of Python installed on your machine, you can use PIP to go in and to perform the task of saying PIP install this package, PIP install this package, PIP install this package. So PIP is a Python package installer. It's going to help you install packages. So we're going to draw a second package index. So the, the reason why we're gonna do two package index is because this one will be anaconda package index, which is separate. And the one above that we have would be pi pi package index, right? Again, in my previous videos, I talked about how pi pi is a bigger package index than, Ana, than anaconda. So when you do pip, Essentially, pip is going to go out here and it's going to grab packages from here and it's going to install them for you in the, in the uh, Python environment you have. So if you have Py Python 3.8, pip is going to come and install the packages in that Python 3.8. So if you need A1, pip is going to go grab A1 and install it for you. You need B1, it's going to grab it. Well, what if you need not just this one environment what if you need not just this one but you need a second python installed and different packages installed it starts getting really complex again there are ways to make this work where you can install python and then when you are invoking python you put the full path to where you have your second installation but it, it just is, is messy and this is where people say hey jump on anaconda really quick because anaconda will help you with that so what does anaconda do well, it helps you with two things. It is not only a package manager. It doesn't only manage specific packages within a specific Python version or a specific Python installation. It also helps you install Python and manage those different environments. Okay? So with Anaconda, you can actually do a couple of things. You can use Anaconda to say, hey, I want Anaconda. Now we're going to switch to green because we're talking about Anaconda, what an Anaconda is capable of. We're going to switch to green. So now with Anaconda, you can say, hey, or maybe we use yellow just to kind of uh, get to what Anaconda can do. You can tell Anaconda to say, I want Conda to install Python 3.8 
And once I install Python 3.8, I want these packages uh, as part of that. So it's doing two things there. It's managing the Python version, and then within that Python version, it can install packages and manage the packages for you. Pip does not do it. Pip, you have to have installed your Python and then it manages packages for you. So it's just a pure package manager. Whereas Anaconda will help you install Python and then within that, it can help you still manage the specific packages. So you can use Anaconda to install Python 3.8 and you have that and you have packages that are working for that. And then you go ahead and still use Conda to say, hey, install 3.9. And within 3.9, you have a, a specific set of packages that you're using within 3.9. And Anaconda or Conda will allow you to do that. And that's why Conda becomes more useful than PIP, just using PIP by itself, because it can, it can go down that one level. And it even does more than, than that. Now, beyond just manages the version of package of, of, of Python beyond just managing the different versions of Python. You might even want to go further. Let's see if we have more colors here. What color haven't we used? White. Let's say you might want to go further to say, hey, I want this part, these two packages to be in, to be in a virtual environment. So I'm going to do VE. Uh, permit me uh, here. You might not see it. And then I want this two to be in VE, in a separate virtual environment. And maybe I want this three to be in a virtual environment, and I want this two to be in a virtual environment. All right. So now we're introducing a new requirement here, where within one Python installation, we don't only want a list of packages. We want to grab those list of packages and configure them into separate environments where if I'm working with 3.8 and I'm working with this first virtual environment, virtual, v, virtual environment one, the very first one, I want four packages available. But if I'm doing another project, again, within Python 3.8, so let's say you're working with v, virtual environment v2, I want six packages available, which are different. All right, so now you have to manage those virtual environments. Well. If, if we remember, all pip does is pip is going to do pip install and give you packages. Well, how are you supposed to create this virtual environment that you need? So let's say you go into 3.8 and you want to create a new virtual environment in 3.8. Pip will not help you with that. Now, there are ways of doing it. There are newer things of doing it like virtual env or pip virtual env. I think newer things are coming up. But to be honest, those are just, they, they are just things that are available, right? The people use it. And I'm not trying to hit on anyone who is using those like virtual env or, or vmf for managing environments but it's not like the gold standard it's not really the gold standard compared to how Py compared to how conda does it so when it comes to managing virtual environments within this kind of context that we've seen here conda does it really well right with conda you can do now three things you can manage your different versions of python Within that, you can install packages. Within that, you can create virtual environments where you can group packages into specific virtual environments so that if you're developing something like one development A, you need a set of packages, you, you can call that this is my virtual environment for data science, and you can have your virtual environment for for machine learning. You can have your virtual environment for working with images, and inside of that, you're grabbing different modules or diff, well, different modules or packages to use within those virtual environments. That is not something that people help you with. And that is something that, well, again, I have to be cautious here because PIP is changing and there are literal utilities out there that are coming up like virtual env, which I'm going to cover in a separate video. But in general, you want to use Anaconda for that. So Anaconda would be useful for going out there and grabbing those packages and installing them and managing your your environment which pip doesn't so hopefully this kind of helps on 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 unpack this a little bit for anyone who might be confused anaconda pip and what's the difference now the drawback and this is why some people get concerned when they use by when they think about okay through i get it now it's obvious to me but why would anyone never why wouldn't anyone use Anaconda as the first thing? What could be a reason why people would give? It really comes down into PIP is 
is part of Python. It's really open source. And there's, there's, there's no commercial licensing to this. Now, Anaconda, there is a, a company behind Anaconda, which was called Continuum, Continuum Analytics, I think. The name might have changed to Anaconda Inc. or so. But there is a company behind that. And as you can imagine, companies, when you're dealing with, with, with commercial products and you're going to be using packages and, and stuff for doing your development, there's always a concern to saying, is there any commercial uh, obligation or liability you, you get exposed to if you're going to be using the Anaconda package manager as opposed to something like PIP or just something that is pure, pure open source. Now, I'm not a commercial expert, so I don't know all the details around this, but that's something that people would tend to ask questions about, right? There's a paid version for Anaconda, I believe. So those are just things that you have to, 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 to pay attention to. For the average person, average you and me just doing regular development, I'm sure you can go with Conda just fine. But if you are an enterprise and you're looking at how does this work for your team with potentially many, 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 many dozens of developers, then you have to think about the commercial side of things. And that's really where any nuance will come into play on why you would not use Anaconda. But beyond that, just from a pure functionality perspective, I think that this, hopefully this has captured it for, for, for us today. It's a little bit busy, but again, PIP is just a Python package installer, right? Install Python packages. Anaconda, it, it can manage your Python, it can manage virtual environments, and it can manage your package. So it's a package manager plus more. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Guys, if you like the video, make sure you like it. If this lecture was relevant to somebody, forward it to them. And as always, if you have any questions or comments and you want me to talk about or to do some whiteboard presentations on, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do. This has been true. You have been awesome. I'll see you in the next lecture.